Hey there, I'm Trisha. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a mini spoiler-free review for The River at Night by Erica Frenerick. The River at Night is a thriller about four women who have been friends for many, many years, and every year they get together to do a girls' trip where they are meant to catch up on each other's lives and um, touch base once a year. This year they have been convinced by Pia, the most outgoing and adventurous of the group, to go on a white water rafting trip down a river in Maine. The story is told from the perspective of the character that wants to go least on this trip. This character doesn't really look forward to it, is not really ad adventurous, and is pretty much a homebody, and so she's really skeptical from the beginning about going on this trip. One of the first nights that they are out there, tragedy strikes, and then things start to go downhill from there. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. First off, the characters on this, the characters were incredibly one-dimensional. The attempt at, at character building that was done for Winnie, the main character, um, was incredibly poor. It was very poorly done. Um, Winnie tells us many times through the first third of the novel, takes every chance that she can get to tell us how um, dissatisfied she is with her life and she expresses so much contempt and dissatisfaction and it almost a, a veiled jealousy of other women who are or seem younger than her, whether that be through their looks, their mannerisms, the way that they speak, anything at all. Her internalized misogyny is just mind-boggling. It was so heavy-handed. And I tried to give it the benefit of the doubt after talking with um, someone about my dissatisfaction with the character. And they said, well, what if it's character building? Okay, well, I'll, I'll you know, see how that goes. It was not character building. Never once by the end of the novel did she grow out of that. It just stopped happening, but it, there wasn't growth or progression in that sense. She did grow as far as her being very timid and not much of a risk taker. There was growth there, but her her internalized misogyny just really hurt the story for me because it was so blatant and heavy-handed. I couldn't handle it. Um, the character chemistry between all of the girlfriends, there was really nothing there. I could hardly believe that these women had been friends for 15, 20 years. They didn't get along at all. They had, you know, a couple of fond memories thrown in here and there, but it didn't seem like that they had been a part of each other's lives for as long as it stated they had. As far as the pacing on this, the pacing was really very poor done. Um, the first two-thirds of the novel were very bland and slow going, and then the last third to a quarter was a little more thrilling, but I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that they were actually in danger for their lives. It did seem a little out there as far as what they were experiencing, whether that could be something that would be reality um, and could actually happen. I didn't buy it. There were also things that were built in to help the plot and I didn't believe them. Uh, Winnie is supposed to know sign language because of her younger brother and it felt like um, the, the use of that was very poorly constructed um, and I didn't really like um, an explanation at the end for another character knowing sign language because it was just a throwaway excuse thrown in in half a sentence in the last five pages of the book. Very, very poorly constructed. There were scenes that were beautifully written as far as describing the scenery of the place that they were in, the, the river and the woods, and that was really nicely done. But then it was negated by other parts that were incredibly poorly written, um, including a line that went something along, along the lines of a dragonfly about four inches long hovered in front of my face and it looked at me with, with its thousands of tiny eyes before it helicoptered away. A dragonfly can helicopter? I didn't realize that dragonflies had the anatomy to be able to move their wings the way that a helicopter does. Hmm. So 
I couldn't really take a lot of the writing seriously after that. That happened in the first quarter of the novel, the first third, and after that I just I couldn't take it seriously anymore. So I ended up giving this 1.5 out of 5 stars. I can't really say that I would recommend it. Um, if you like thrillers it might be worth checking out, but if you read a lot of thrillers it isn't something that is likely to wow you. So that is it for this short, spoiler-free review of The River at Night by Erica Frenerick. Let me know in the comments down below if you read this book and what were your thoughts on it. And now is the perfect time if you've not already done so. Click that little subscribe button down below if you want to see more content from me. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!